The day the sinless Son of God was baptized by a sinner, part two, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 76, slash day 443, since January 1, 2016. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he suffered him and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We acknowledge our weakness. And so we pray to you that you give all of us strength, the preacher, the people listening, not only here but around the world, staff that is working to make all of this happen, uh, to preach the gospel, to preach your holy word in 100 languages simultaneously, live and on demand. The Lord, bless and anoint and prosper it. Use it for your glory, praise and honor, because we know your promise that if your holy word goes forth, it shall not come back void, uh, because of your promise that some water and uh, some plant and some water, but you give the increase we pray once again that you'll crush and crucify us uh, and as uh, the old preachers have said in the past hide us behind the cross and Lord we pray that you'll demonstrate the anointing the unction and the power of your Holy Spirit save that soul that is nearest uh, hell we uh, in fact pray for millions to hear the gospel and to be saved revive your Christian people and glorify your holy name and lift up your holy son the lord jesus christ for it is in his name we pray and for his sake amen you may be seated Ladies and gentlemen, S.D. Gordon said Jesus was God, spelling himself out in language. Humanity could understand. I would like to repeat that in case you missed it. S. D. Gordon said Jesus Christ was God spelling himself out in language humanity could understand what a beautiful quote 
ladies and gentlemen, the baptism of Jesus is one of the events of his life that is recounted in all four Gospels. Testifying to its importance. It was, as we see here, the first unveiling of the Son of God on a large scale. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, the Bible tells us. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. My God, my God, I thank God for the privilege to be living in the time that I am living in. But sometimes I wish I was there on the day when Jesus Christ, the sinless Savior, got baptized by a sinner. To hear the voice of God from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What a day. I often wonder, did he say it in the Hebrew language? How did he say it? Uh, but I do want you to notice that when God said it, he said it one time and that was it. If you notice about God, they don't overdo it in trying to get your attention and trying to get you to do what you ought to do in connection to them. And to God and Jesus. God said it one time. He, he introduced Jesus one time to the world. That was it. In other words, God dropped the mic. One time. And he dropped the mic. was through with it. Some of us would would say, well, you know, to really get his message out, maybe he should have had a big demonstration of angels and he should have said it repeatedly for at least 100 days. Or maybe once every generation. Once every 100 years. God said it one time and he dropped the mic. That was it. He didn't do like the man on the commercial who kept picking up the mic and dropping the mic again. It was over. I'm, I'm going to introduce the Son of God to you, my Son, in whom I am well pleased, one time. That's it. That's how awesome God is. And, and you're not going to see anything. <laughs> you're just going to hear me speak. Uh, three aspects of Jesus' presentation to the world or introduction to the world are given in these verses. First, beloved, the heavens were opened unto him. My God, my God, I wish I was there, but I am thankful for being here. The heavens being open is a symbol for revelation from God. For some 400 years, the Jews had been without revelation from God. They had not heard from God. Now, by opening the heavens, God was saying that he was ready once again to speak, not only to his chosen people, but to the entire world through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. Can somebody say amen? Did you notify our church members? 
Hello, church members, hundreds of miles away. God bless you. Matthew specifies that the heavens were open to him, that is, to Jesus. God did not provide his new revelation directly to men. Rather, he sent them a mediator in Jesus Christ who would convey the message of God through his life, his words, and his actions, Emmanuel, God with us. This is truly an amazing situation. And as I said earlier in the service, we have not gotten over this yet. People with good sense, people who have sense, people who know God, who know Jesus Christ, who have trusted Jesus Christ, we have not gotten over this event yet. This whole story of Jesus the Christ. Then we see... Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, upon Jesus. The Old Testament Jews were familiar with the idea of God's Spirit filling his prophets. They respected one uh, who had the Spirit of God and God let them know that they should afford Jesus Christ that same respect. by giving him a visual, visual representation of his spirit being given to Jesus. The dove that symbolizes the spirit is likely uh, an allusion to the dove that Noah sent out after the flood. The dove, unlike the ravens sent before him, came back to the ark with an olive branch in its beak. The dove, being a pure bird, could not uh, eat the caucuses. And so she came back bringing good tidings of the new world, if you will. Finally, God gave audible approval of Jesus, which is mind-boggling and declared him as his son, Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Many of the people didn't know about Jesus' miraculous birth who were standing there. If they had known, they may have forgotten by this time or not connected the dots. People needed to know that Jesus was not just another spirit-filled prophet. He was different. Uh, he was and is the Son of God. Can somebody who has been born again and who still fired up for Jesus say amen? And as such, he bore the same divinity that God possessed. He was God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. He was God in the flesh. God walking among men. The greatest period of time in the history of the world was when God visited earth, wrapped up in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. And beloved, the world has not gotten over it yet. Even CNN has not gotten over it. As liberal as they are, they got to make a film about this man named Jesus the Christ. Those of us who have been born again, we have never gotten over it. Certainly by this declaration, beloved, the people realized that John's words were true and that a new era of salvation, mercy, grace, and judgment was upon them. I like what Nicholas Lord Tonneau wrote. 
He said, The Son of Man from Jordan rose and looked to God above. When, lo, the opening heavens disclose a swift descending dove, the Spirit lighting on his brow anoints the Holy One, the Father's voice declaring, Thou art my beloved Son. So when, through his baptizing, blessed the fount, new birth conveys, man kneels, the Son of God confessed, heaven opens, and he prays, Redeemer of a world undone, we praise thee and adore Jesus with God the Father one and the Spirit evermore. A new day came when Jesus was revealed, ladies and gentlemen, before men as the Son of God and the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Can somebody say amen? And so, beloved, if you are ready to place your faith and trust in this man, Emmanuel, God with us, his name is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as your Savior, allow me to show you how you can trust him as your Savior in a very simple way. It's not hard, yes, contrary to some theologians, it is easy. You can call it easy believism if you want to. It is easy to believe on Christ. There's nothing hard about it. We want it to be difficult because we're sinful, wicked human beings. But why would God make it hard for such ignorant people as we are? It was hard for Jesus. It's not hard for you. That's why in a few days we're going to call it Good Friday. It's Good Friday for us. It was a bad Friday for Jesus and God. We call it Good Friday because we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world, and we go free. Amen, somebody. I like that. <laughs> you say, well, you don't deserve it. I know it. That's why I like it even more. You deserve hell. I know I do, but I thank God for Jesus. Amen, somebody. And the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has covered all of my sins. So dear friend, if you want to experience salvation through Jesus Christ today, today, wherever you are in the world, thousands listen from every country in the world, live and on demand, wherever you are, nighttime, daytime, black, white, red, yellow, makes no difference. Riding on a bus, on your bicycle, walking down the street, walking your dog, Stop for a minute and pray this simple prayer called the sinner's prayer and ask Jesus Christ to save your soul. He'll do it. Just realize, first of all, that you are a sinner and so am I. And that we all have broken God's commandments. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all, not some, not just the white folks, not just the black folks, not just the yellow folks, not just the brown folks, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have done wrong. Every last one of us, from the Pope and Billy Graham on down, everybody has sinned against God. Oh, we try to hide it. We try to cover it up. We spend millions of dollars trying to do that, but we have sinned against God. You're guilty, and I'm guilty. Secondly, accept the fact that you, there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. That means somebody has to pay for sin. Either you're going to pay for it yourself in hell, or you're going to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and let him pay for it. For he's already paid for it. He's paid it all. Therefore, all to him we owe. And then third, accept the fact that because of your sin, you're going to die and go to hell. If you have never trusted Christ as Savior, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not trying to scare you. For Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is an awful place. You want to know the people going to hell? Here you go. In Revelation 
21 8 the Bible says but the fearful people too afraid to get saved because they're afraid of what their mother and father might say what their friends might say what their job mates and school mates might say they're fearful the unbelieving people who call themselves agnostics and atheists and the abominable mean and hateful cruel uh, people homosexuals transgender gender people the abominable people, murderers, and whoremongers, people who have sex with people who they're not married to, sorcerers, people who practice witchcraft and voodoo, and idolaters, people who worship anything or anybody other than God and Jesus. And all liars. If God didn't get you on these other sins, He got you on the liars. You know you've told you have told a lie in the past. Some of you are living a lie. Shall have their part, the Bible says, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell is an awful place, but I have some good news for you. I'm here to share the good news, but I got to tell you about the bad news before you can appreciate the good news. Jesus Christ said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, wherever you are in the world, God loves you. You might be a homosexual, you might be a fornicator, you might be an adulterer, you might be a liar, you might be a cheat. You might be practicing voodoo and witchcraft and trying to put a hex on the president, but God still loves you. If you're in this world, I'm here to tell you, our God is so big, he loves you, even you, and the evil, even with the evil that you have done. That he gave his only begotten son, his name is Jesus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, perish where in hell, but have everlasting life. You know that you can't go to heaven without trusting Christ as Savior. So just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And pray and ask him to save your soul and he will save you. And just follow me in what is called the sinner's prayer. Are you willing to humble yourself and admit that you are a sinner? And trust Christ as Savior? For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou, you, shalt be saved. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, somebody. That's good news. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand to be saved. does not matter whether the church doors are open or not. To be saved, you can get saved right now. If it's 12 o'clock at night, if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, if it's... 6 o'clock in the morning, if it's 10 o'clock in the morning, if it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you can be saved right now. You don't have to wait for the church doors to open. You don't have to wait for the preacher to extend his hands to you. The thief on the cross got saved on the cross while he was dying. He never jumped off and joined the first Baptist church and got baptized. But Jesus said to him, Today, son... Today thou shalt be with me in paradise on the cross. So, dear friend, if you're willing to believe and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to save you, he'll save you right now. Repeat it after me, this simple prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. I'll wait for you. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I've done many evil things against you throughout my life. 
I have broken your commandments and I understand according to your holy word whether I feel like it or not whether I think so or not according to your holy word I will spend eternity in hell if I don't trust Christ as Savior and so therefore Lord have mercy and grace upon me a sinner as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for my sins was buried and rose again that he shed his blood on the cross for my sins as the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world Lord Jesus please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins on the cross, was buried and rose again, and you prayed and asked him to save you from sin and hell, then according to the word of God, you are now saved. Congratulations on trusting Christ as Savior, you have done the most important thing in life, and that is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by believing on Him. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me at dw3 or one of our other email addresses at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. Uh, we have some free material that we want to send you immediately. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. And dear friend, God loves you. We love you, and may God bless you. Real good is our prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer.